Brilliant. Um, so yeah, yeah. Um, lovely watching watching series. And uh, yeah, I was just thinking back on on Supergen. So Supergen kind of kicked off the actual original Supergen program around the time that I was starting my PhD. And it was that weird and wonderful thing. And then along came the hydrogen fuel cell Supergen, uh, not long after we created our cola. Uh, so I guess, yeah, we've been uh, wandering along this journey with, with the Supergen guys. Um, and yeah, it really is. It's uh, I don't manage to get to half as many meetings as I should, but just seeing these companies and individuals uh, evolve and grow is uh, yeah, re real joy. So really, really, really happy to be part of it. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully many, many more years to come um, as we, well, commercialize, get, get to something real. Um, so I'll attempt to move on through some, some slides. I'm going to just talk a bit around well, buses, trucks and trains, really. Um, so as our cola, our mission is to is to put fuels, fuel cells into things. Uh, there's all this amazing academic research going on, uh, technology development by the uh, kind of core technology product developers, be it fuel cells, hydrogen storage, batteries and the like. Uh, and really our cola, uh, the objective is just to do the bit that's kind of not so sexy, the bit that nobody else wants to do. You guys can carry on being clever and getting patents uh, and we'll do the grubby bit. Um, we can't, I can't think of it as kind of uh, gowns to suits to boots. So pulling through that, that intellectual capital into, yeah, a bit of wearing a suit and chasing a dollar. Uh, but really the interest is in putting things on the ground, you know, guys in depots, uh, girls in depots, looking after buses and trucks and trains. Attempt to change slides. Does it work? I'm struggling. Can somebody move a slide on? Yeah, brilliant. Um, so yeah, I, you know, as the industry is uh, in it's still in its weird and weird and wonderful phase, um, we work right across. Try and jump back one slide, that might be me. Um, yeah, right from that kind of market creation piece. Um, well, impatience and slides jumping around, sorry. Um, right from kind of market creation through to kind of putting product on the ground and, and looking after it. Um, um, and so you've got, you've got this slightly odd, odd shaped company, so interfacing very much with the academics on understanding how do you do the technology right. Um, but also a lot of stuff that really interesting to see the, the presentation Dan gave there on uh, the weird and wonderful ways we all find to get money into making stuff happen. Um, so I guess we've done a lot of our version of, of that. And many years ago, I looked at creating an incubator, didn't get the funding to do it. So, so sod it, we'll do it ourselves. Um, so yeah, Dan, I, 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 I see a kindred spirit there. Let's let's make stuff happen. Um, so slides have jumped around, but if we just go with the one that's on screen now, I suppose it gives a, a kind of view of how we've evolved from right back at, yeah, there you go, 2012, at the start of the H2FC Supergen. Collaboration with universities was really a way to pull forward for us. Little bits of revenue, great partners, access to staff. I realise you can employ PhD students evenings and weekends, um, and you can get them to work for you during their office hours through uh, funded projects. Um, so kind of growing the team and then moving up into larger vehicles. We did, I think we did actually the world's first double deck bus in 2014. And really that was kind of a, a key point for us. Uh, we actually killed that project because the partner on the project didn't want to do codes and compliance and standards and safety in a rigorous way. Uh, they said there's not enough resource. The market's not certain enough. Let's just get something working. And we decided at that point, no, we're not going to do just get it working. Uh, we're really going to drill into um, doing the compliance piece right. Um, so yeah, thanks. Thanks, Marina. Um, and so that's that's been a bit that we've we've really focused on. So we, we hired in a very rigorous fin uh, to drive us all mad with systems and process. And that's what's kind of led us through. So we're up to about 75 people, maybe 80 people this week, um, hiring like mad, hoping to hire another. I'd like to hire another 150 in the next 18 months, see where I can a, a, a acquire the dollar to do that. Uh, there's a few few irons in the fire. Um, so yeah, as we've grown the kind of engineering capability, building in that systems and process work so that we can actually look eye to eye with with OEMs. So, those, you know, what I think of as proper companies that make large volumes of vehicles. And it's that thinking through of the whole piece that's allowed us to work with most of the OEMs in the UK that you know of. We've probably worked with um, some under NDA, so, some not. Um, and getting that point of, yeah, just let's not blow something up. Uh, I think is a really key point for us. Uh, it doesn't matter whether it's us or somebody else in the industry, but getting that discipline through to, to package hydrogen fuel cells in, in the right way. Uh, yeah, we're working. Um, so in terms of all of that work over many years, drawing on uh, inter intellectual capability from the likes of Imperial, uh, quite a bit with Warwick Manufacturing Group on batteries, up with the guys up in Nottingham, uh, some of the guys from UCL, hired quite a lot of guys out of UCL. So really bringing through that, that capability 
from the university base into what we think of as a technology platform. Finally, we got some 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 proper help on the marketing and communications. We branded it the A Drive. So really, it's a it's a platform. It's how do you bring together all of the disparate elements, best in class from a wide, wide range of suppliers to actually make a thing happen, be it a bus or a truck or a train. And the key for us on this is, you know, truck market is the really big one. Um, I've been learning about the, the structure of the diesel industry over many years. Truck drives everything. Buses get the kind of leftovers and trains. They barely bother doing trains. It's hardly worth it. Hardly worth the effort. It's such a small market. So if we really want to get fuel cells and hydrogen into these markets, we need to figure out how to to get the economies of scale, both on the product, but also if you like on that non-recurrent engineering cost, the effort, the activation energy, if you like to get somebody in, into using hydrogen fuel cells. Um, so let's just jump quickly through a project. The Scottish train project thinks a really nice, nice one. So it's a nice chunky contract for us, which is good. Um, but really what's interesting about this is it's not about putting a hydrogen train on the rails. This is a 40 year old, 4 million mile train. Um, it's the last in its class. You could call it a dog. Um, we really quite like it. And the reason it's good is because it's a platform. So the Scottish government are viewing this as a platform to develop capability, local supply chain, local skills, um, working with the University of St Andrews. I think John's on the call um, to to actually grow the capability to make more stuff happen not to pull off a, a not not to kind of deliver a one off uh, and obviously that's very much where, where we need to be uh, and actually within St Andrews talking yeah down stuff you like the, the University of St Andrews version of how do we get stuff to market is the hydrogen accelerator so this again it's this public private partnership sorry this is an academic public partnership that then works with the likes of us um, to get stuff to happen to go really quick um, so yeah really nice project um, put a train on the rails everything has to be done by COP26 uh, you ask the engineering team what steam coming out of their ears or well, they would have but they've run out of steam um, so yeah notes the ground store really on um, getting stuff ready because there's the next one then is the hydrogen fuel cell powered refuse collection vehicle uh, the other other rcvs are available but this is one of the things that we've spent quite a bit of time looking at how do you do an rcv that actually does what it's supposed to do again you can quickly take an rcv refuse collection vehicle slide the body backwards stick a load of kit in a pile behind the cab Bingo, it's a hydrogen fuel cell refuse collection vehicle. Yeah, well, actually it isn't because the weight, the weight distribution isn't right. You've got not enough weight on the front wheel. So it won't do what thing what people want it to do. So really getting into the weeds of properly understanding the, the use case, the user requirements is, well, partly a headache and partly the, actually the really interesting bit. Um, so that's a fuel cell refuse collection vehicle. Uh, and the next one is buses, which I guess is you know where, where we started. So I think we've done three double deck bus integrations now. Uh, hopefully the one we're working on now will actually go to market, actually get some of them on the road running around properly. Um, but yeah, the bus industry is a, an interesting tangle. Uh, I don't know how many bus bus industry folks there are on, on the call now. Um, you know, it's highly regionalized. Even the big bus companies are really quite small in the, in the automotive sector. And again, it's an area where you've got a lot of small bus companies trying to bring hydrogen fuel cells to market and they're all having to spend money to learn and figure out how to do it. Um, so yeah, as, a, as an industry, we really have to figure out how to get our kit. If you like that last mile, you know, in distribution, we talk a lot about the last mile, but there's almost that last, that last, I don't know, last inch or something or other on, on the integration approach um, to get the fuel cells deployed into the vehicles without that massive demand on the vehicle manufacturers. And I think really importantly, in a way that's also safe and compliant. Um, I think that might be almost me. And then, uh, yeah, if you if you really want the discipline of doing things in a way that's serviceable, then yeah, have a service and maintenance crew. So the little Renault Kangoo vans that lots of you will know from all the European projects from Symbio, uh, we run a big fleet of those around the UK. Um, and yeah, real lessons learned there. You know, some of the early stage Symbio vans, they really were prototypes put to work. Later stage, a bit better. Uh, but there's a hell of a lot to learn on just how do you get technology to market? How do you support it through? How do you mop up the uh, the challenges in supply chain? Hydrogen sensors that don't work, you have to change them all the time. And the, to the customer, it's just a, a crappy broken hydrogen vehicle. We know it's about one specific co component and supply chain, which affects, you, know, you, can, you can have supply chain issues on a Ford Transit diesel. Um, but just that, 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 the nuances of that and then feeding that back up into how do you make vehicles that are going to you know, do do their 14, 15 year life. Uh, and I think that's it for me. And I think I'm on time.